is, is prosperity gospel, but it's gotten worse than that. It's outright lying gospel. Gospel that, that bathes itself in the Bible, but doesn't believe in what it's actually speaking about. Preaching things that aren't even truthfully in this Bible. Just had a conversation tonight, a man believes that there's actually apostles hiding amongst us, hiding out, waiting for the church to reveal them, waiting for the time where God's going to reveal these apostles. Yeah, he will. He revealed these these, these false these false apostles, and the, there are very many antichrists that's walking amongst us. Yes, he will reveal them. They're already infiltrated the churches. They're already lying behind pulpits. They're already claiming titles that are not even close to what they've ever been anointed to. They're straight lying about everything. And can you imagine what it's like for a, a person of, that's, that's coming, that wants to come into the ministry, that wants to come into a church for that matter. They want to come in and worship with the Lord. They, they finally want to get their life together. And they're walking down the stroke. Just follow me a little bit here. Can you imagine a brand new believer? God has led him to, to his son. Jesus, they repented of their sin. Jesus Christ has healed and forgiven them and healed them of their sins. Now he's going to a body of Christ. And he looks down the street and it looks like a Walmart of choices. You got Pentecostals, you got Baptists, you got Presbyterians, you got Episcopalians, you got the Seventh day Adventists, you got Anabaptists, you got Roman Catholics, I'm not Christian, you got Mormons running around. I mean, what, what is. What, what is he thinking? Like, man, do I got to pick a side like I'm in, a, in like it's an NFL team? Who do I pick that I know is going to speak in the right thing? And that's what leads me to our, our reading today. It's going to come out of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to start at verse 3. And then in this part, Paul's talking about false teachers. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this, but let's go ahead and dig deep. So we can start to highlight what it is for a new believer to walk into a church that's not of one accord. The body is fragmented beyond anything I could ever imagine. When I walked away 27 years ago from, when, from, from my calling in life, when I did not want to preach, when I turned away from the church, I promise you, it was not an easy decision even as a 12-year-old. But you want to know what went through my mind? I don't trust the body of Christ. I don't trust what's going on. This. There's so many churches doing so many wild things and, and crazy things going on out there. But let's go ahead and read. Remember, chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 4 is what we're going to read. But I fear least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if he received another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Did you hear what Paul's talking about? Another spirit that you did not receive, another Jesus that they did not preach, that is going on in our church today. I had a young man tell me, Catholic man telling me, just, just earlier today, you know, Pastor Eric, I want to pray for you. No, 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 don't pray for me because I don't know what God you're serving. Whatever spirit is confirming in your system is not the same Holy Spirit that, that, that lives inside of an average Christian, a true Christian, a, a son or a daughter of God. That ain't living in us. That spirit that, that's in that boy is not of the Holy, it's not the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, it's not. You got to be careful who prays over you because you don't know what God they serve serving. You don't know what idol they put inside on, on their chest of drawer and getting on their knees worshiping every night. You don't want to put that over your life. Trust me on this. Not everybody, everyone that says they're Christian is not Christian. It, you've heard that proverb before. Just because you go, they use it when they talk about church. But just because you go into a church don't mean you're saved. The devil's in that same church walking right behind you. In some cases, you look at the back of his head and he's listening to what's happening in that church. And can you imagine the new believer coming in? And, and he's walking in, and he says, man, you know, I just got saved. I'm so excited. My friends got me to the Lord. I now know who Jesus Christ is. And he walks in. He can't even get to his pew because Sister Abigail's rolling around on the ground because she's got the Holy Ghost in her. Let me tell you something. Let's point this out. The Holy Spirit ain't going to throw you on the ground and from worshiping, from singing song and dance. The only time a person's laying on the ground because of what the Holy Spirit has done is when a demon got rebuked out of that person. Think I'm crazy? Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go to the good book. The book we trust. I'm reading out the King James, by the way. If you read out of the other translations, it's going to sound very similar. It should be that far off. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 4, 
and go to verse 33. Actually, let's go to 34. This is interesting. No, 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 no. no. Let's go back to 33. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. How many times do we see Sister Williams or Brother Jones and the preachers preaching at the front, preaching a good message, a good convicting message? And that man gets thrown to the ground, and he's gyrating and flipping around. And the people start saying, hey, man, that's the Holy Ghost moving in that man's body. No, no, that ain't the Holy Ghost moving in that man's body. What's moving in that man's body is a spirit coming out because he got rebuked. That's what's really coming out. Or it's, it's having problems, and it wants to get out because hearing that truth getting in it, and then you get, you get men and women coming there fanning them and waving them out. No, no, get the prayer team to get that demon out of there. Don't be fanning them and trying to cool them back down. That spirit is acting up. Get that demon out of that person. So can you imagine what it is for a young believer to walk into a church and he's listening to people speaking in tongues and gibberish and, and, and jargon and, and, and saying to the high heavens about how good it is to speak tongues and they say in all kinds of mess that don't even make sense. Now he goes to sit in his seat, but remember he can't get there because Sister Abigail's flopping around on the ground and they're waving their hands thinking it's all great. Or what's worse, he goes into... A church where a man, a man is sitting behind a pulpit, or worse, a woman is sitting behind a pulpit saying, I'm a, I'm apostle such and such. And he goes, wait a minute, my Bible the tells me there's only 12. And then we got Paul that's 13. Where, the, where are we getting, where is this person coming from? And why, is, why are they saying, because it's fake. It's called lies and deceit. And until we as a church want to come together and start exposing these liars and these cheats and these con artists and these frauds and these fakes and these phonies, we are pushing the very believers that are trying to come in and worship genuinely to get their souls saved and to hold up the name of Jesus and to praise God for being made and, and showing grace and mercy. We're pushing them back out into the world and making them feel like fools because the Bible that we led them to, when they open it up and they look up at the pulpit and look at the people around, they see nothing but living hypocrisy and contradictions. We've got to get better than that. And so let, let's be straight honest with this. Let's read one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, if you sit behind a pulpit, or if you see this man sitting behind a pulpit and he's got prophet in front of his name, he got apostle in front of his name, there's two options that you can think of in this. One, he's a liar and a thief and a, and a crook, hide behind a title that he did not get, or he's ignorant and has not read his Bible enough and thinks, I'm just going to take this title because you know what, it's going to make me, it's going to puff me up, or maybe it may give me credibility. If preaching the gospel don't give you credibility, that title ain't going to give you credibility as well. It's just not going to do it. And if he that comes preaches another Jesus, well, what Jesus are we talking about? The Jesus that basically said, well, you know, Jesus was not a hard preacher. He, he didn't tell those people no rough, no rough, no rough tough pastor. He wasn't firing brimstone. He wasn't talking about... Are you reading your Bible? How many times did you see uh, Jesus Christ say, ye, oh, you hypocrites? How many times did we hear the, the, the you den of vipers coming out? How many times did you hear, you hear all these things about him? He's trying to call people to out and tell you, hey, man, you, your life ain't living right. We don't even want to accept the fact that Jesus Christ was a hard preacher. When he said in John 6, oh, I'm sorry, does this offend you? What's it going to be like when I rise up and you see me going into heaven? You see, the world is trying to make up a Jesus that somebody else can believe. They want to make a Jesus that fits in their paradigm, fits their agenda, and they, and they want to be able to do that so that way they're not convicted no more. They can live their life of lies and lust and continue to keep doing sin in the way they want to because they will sit there and say, well, since Jesus Christ got on that cross and he died for my sins, I ain't got to worry about it no more. That's exactly what drives homosexuality. That's what drives adultery. That's what drives lies, thieves. Because they believe that since, they, since Christ already died for and they repented that one time, everything's good to go. Repentance is a daily activity. It is part of your repertoire, Christians. It is part of our daily understanding to always take that burden off our back. If you are a homosexual 
and you went above in front of God and said, God, I repent of my sins. I accept Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Please heal me of my infirmities. I feel genuinely remorseful for what I've done. And you go right around and do your business, and you don't feel any conviction from that point forward going forward. Jesus Christ has not been in your heart yet, and I pray that he'll reach your heart yet. If you are a thief, and you get on your knees and say, Lord, I, I just please forgive me for my sins. Uh, please, and please accept me now I'm a sinner and Lord just clean me up and you leave and you still steal and you don't feel any conviction for you to stop doing what you're doing you've not accepted Jesus Christ yet and if someone's telling you you know what since you know you know what's what's the proverb like to say not the proverb I'm sorry what they like to say once saved always saved let's get that lie out the window you can lose your salvation yes you can yes sir you can lead your salvation in several different ways. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, messing and altering the word of God, and of course apostasy, rejecting who Jesus Christ, rejecting everything that's happened in your life. Yes, those three keys, salvation gone. So that one saved, always saved, come on now. But that's the Jesus they want to preach about. The one saved, always saved. Let's keep reading. If ye receive another spirit, not everything is the Holy Spirit. That's why it says test the spirits. If a man comes up to you and says, man, you know, God has called me to preach. Well, first of all, God don't talk to man. The Holy Spirit speaks for us now. It speaks in us at all times. We just don't have the ears to hear it because sometimes we just want to hear ourselves. But that spirit that comes in and confirms lies to us, that can sit there and tell us, you know, you've been called to be an apostle. That ain't in the word of God. We know that that, that ain't even true. He called you. I'm a prophet, and, I, and I'm going to be able to, to, to speak and things and make new revelations. There ain't no new revelations, bro. There ain't no new revelations coming out of here. These revelations that are in this book are as good yesterday as they was today, and they will be tomorrow, and they are set in stone. Don't be letting these so-called theologians come out there and try to convince you of their wild theories. You've got to trust within this Word of God. You've got to be able to trust what it is the Holy Spirit is giving and teaching you. Said, now, the Holy Spirit can teach you anything, man. It can teach you everything that you need to know. But that other spirit is going to teach you some lies and will back up any agenda you got. It'll, anything in the world will say yes to. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. So that's why I say you don't want everybody praying for you because you don't know what spirit they got. And then you received another gospel which ye have not accepted, yet you might bear it with them. My God, what other gospel do we have? It's prosperity gospel. My God, I could spend all day on prosperity gospel, but you know what? I ain't got the time nor the connection right now because I don't want to get off on no whole other subject. But let me tell you something. If you listen to prosperity gospel, you are listening to the devil's tongue and his doctrine, and you're accepting that stuff in your life. I don't, I don't know how many times I get emails and phone calls from people saying, well, don't God want me rich? God wants you rich? God wants you faithful. God wants you in repentance. God wants you to be an asset to the world, an asset to someone in your life, to be a good husband, to be a good wife, to be a good mother, to be a good father. He, you, we are spending all our energy trying to worry about how much money we can get out of God when we're not even trying to figure out what God wants from us. He wants us to grow some fruit. Some fruit. Go to Romans 7, 4, if you don't mind. Go to Romans 7, 4. Romans 7, 4. You want to know what God's expecting from us? You want to talk about, well, Lord, I want, you know, I want to live life abundantly with joy. Well, guess what? When you actually can produce the thing that God wants you to do and achieve the expectation he has from you, you will start to see an abundance in your life. You go to Romans 7, 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. You want life abundant? Bring fruit to God. Those newfound Christians that are now coming into our church, they're coming in with, with hope to say, God, you know, I want you to go ahead and, and, and help grow this fruit. Please, God, I believe in your name now. I believe in your word. I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've repented. Please get my fruit to grow, Lord. Grow my fruit. That is an abundance that we want to be doing as Christians. We want to make sure that we have one accord, one church. You should be able to walk in any church in America, any church in this world that believes in Jesus Christ. They believe in the Trinity. They believe in repentance. And you should be able to walk in that church, open your Bible, and hear the same thing coming out of that pulpit and from, your, from the people in the congregation. You should not be able to hear this other nonsense and junk and jargon. I should be able to walk into the same church in Alabama, to the same church in New York, and I should be able to not miss a beat about what's believed in this Word of God. But every time you put that sign outside that says, you know, I'm just going to say Pentecostal, Episcopalian, you now run the risk of teaching some wrong gospel. 
some wrong teaching. And guess what? It's all from an agenda. The agenda of I know what the, the truth is. Let me tell you something. The only person and the only opinion that matters